I want to talk about what the definite integral is. It's a really tough concept and maybe one of the toughest, toughest concepts in all of calculus, but it's really important. And it answers the question, how do you find the exact area under the curve? Well, let's start with the area under the curve problem. Let f of x be a non-negative and continuous function on the interval a, b. That's what we have drawn here. Find the area of the region lying beneath the curve y equals f of x, so below this red curve, and above the x-axis, so above here, from x equals a to x equals b, so between these two vertical lines. We're looking for the area, the exact area of this region. Now, before we were talking about approximating the area with rectangular sums. The idea is to take the interval from a to b and chop it up into a certain number of subintervals. In this case, we have four. n equals four. n is the number of subintervals. And we use four rectangles to approximate the area under this curve. Now, each rectangle is the same width. And that width, delta x, is b minus a, the total width of the interval, divided by four, the number of rectangles. So that's what delta x is. This is a left-hand sum. The left-hand sum is the sum of areas of a bunch of rectangles. Each of these areas is a height times a width. Delta x is the width in this first rectangle. f of x sub 0 is the height. In the second one, delta x is the width, and f of x sub 1 is the height. Right? We're getting the heights from the left-hand x values for each rectangle. So the height of this rectangle will be f of this value. Right? That's where the rectangle touches the curve. So we sum from 0 to 3. There are four rectangles here, but we're summing from 0 to 3. That's a little, little confusing. This is the way that summation is written in shorthand. This is called sigma notation. And when the sums have a lot of terms, it's much more convenient to use this notation, even though it's a little confusing. But notice, every term in this sum has the form f of x sub something times delta x. This something is the index of the sum. And we're going from 0 to 3. Right? That represents these numbers here. OK, this is the left-hand sum. And it's a, an approximation of the area under the curve. And as you can see, this left-hand sum gives me an underestimate. Now, as you might imagine, this sum gets more accurate the more rectangles we use. So as uh, n gets larger, we get more and more accuracy. Now let's see how to make this exact. Let's say that we have n rectangles. So I'm not going to specify the number, just n. Delta x, the width of each rectangle, will be b minus a over n. So each of these widths is b minus a over n. b minus a, again, is this entire width divided by n, the number of rectangles. Gives me the individual width here. The left-hand sum is now the sum from i equals 0 to n minus 1. Notice we don't go all the way up to n. x sub n would be this number here, b. And we don't use that height to find the, last, the, the, the height of the rectangle. Right? The last rectangle is f of x sub n minus 1 times delta x. So anyway. We sum from 0 to n minus 1. This is n rectangles. And it's still an approximation. No matter how big n is, it's still an approximation. It just gets better and better as n approaches infinity. And here's the idea. Here's where the calculus comes in. To get the exact area, we take the limit as n approaches infinity of this left-hand sum. <clears throat> now notice, n, the number that we're taking to infinity, is this value. It also happens to correspond to the number of rectangles. So we're making, we're using more and more rectangles. And if the value of the left-hand sum gets closer and closer to some limit, then that will be the value of my area. So just a quick recap. We've been talking about approximating the area under a curve with a left-hand sum. That's a rectangular sum that uses rectangles that reach up to the left uh, and touch the curve at the left-hand corner. But we can also do the same thing with right-hand sums. Take a look at this. The area equals the limit as n approaches infinity of this sum. This is the left-hand sum, right? The sum from i equals 0 to n minus 1 is a left-hand sum. But we can also sum from i equals 1 to n. The sum looks exactly the same, but the indices are different. We're going from 1 to n. This makes it a right-hand sum. And it turns out that when n approaches infinity, this gives me the exact same limit, and thus the exact same area. So you can calculate the area either using a left or right-hand sum. What we did before with the left-hand sum wasn't special. We could do it for the right-hand sum as well. Now, this idea of the limit uh, 
that gives me the exact area. It's so important that we give it a name and it's called the definite integral. So here's my definition of definite integral. If a function f is continuous, we define the definite integral to be, and it's read the integral from a to b of f of x with respect to x is this limit as n approaches infinity of the left hand sum or this limit as n approaches infinity of the right hand sum. Either of these limits will give you the value of this definite integral. Now note here, I didn't specify whether or not f of x was non-negative. It just has to be continuous for this definition to work. But if f of x is non-negative, then this value will exactly equal the area under the curve. So let's go back to our original picture here. Remember this problem, the area under the curve. This area is exactly given by the definite integral if f of x is non-negative, and that's why it's so important. We don't have to approximate anymore. We can get the exact value.